today we're going to create this augmented reality look in Apple Motion. This look is inspired by Apple Vision Pro, or as I like to call them, the GOGs. Now the GOGs don't come out till next year, but allegedly they're gonna let us see our apps in 3D space. And I think that idea is really cool. I can't wait for them to come out. But in the meantime, the best we can do is simulate this effect in Apple Motion. If you wanna follow along with me, we're using a B-roll shot that I pulled off of ArtGrid. I will link to that down below. If you want access to my working files, join my Patreon community. And if you want to know more about Apple Motion, check out my course, Motion Launchpad at jenjager.com. This tutorial has a lot of steps. We're going to start in Pixelmator Pro. If you don't use Pixelmator, you can do what I do in Pixelmator in another platform like Photoshop, no problem. And we're also going to be working in 3D space. We're going to be doing some motion tracking. It's a lot of steps. Let's just dive right into it. So like I said, I am going to start in Pixelmator Pro. The first thing I did is take a screenshot from Pinterest. I liked Pinterest because it has all of these pins, these cards, and I thought it'd be really easy to cut these out and make them come out in 3D. So I'm just gonna right click on this screenshot in my finder and I'm going to select open with Pixelmator Pro. And now we've got Pixelmator open with our Pinterest image. So what we need to do first is make as many copies of this image as we want pop-outs in our finished video. And we're gonna need one extra to serve as our full screen image. So you can see here, I ended up with eight versions of this same image. Now, the next thing I need to do is identify which of these pins I like and I wanna bring into 3D space in Apple Motion. So I'm gonna start with these blueberry cookies and I'm going to use the rounded rectangle tool here in Pixelmator Pro. And I'm going to draw a rounded rectangle on top of that cookie image. I'm gonna dial down the opacity a little bit so I can make sure that my rounded rectangle is the perfect size and shape for covering this pin. And then in my layers panel, I'm going to drag that rounded rectangle underneath my first image layer copy. And then I'm going to right click on the image layer copy and select create clipping mask. Now let me select that rounded rectangle and dial up the opacity again. And now you can see that what I've done is I've cut out that stack of blueberry cookies perfectly. Now, everything you see me doing here in Pixelmator Pro, like I said, can be done with another image editing app like Photoshop, or you could technically do it in Apple Motion. I just think it's more efficient to do it in a photo editing app like this one. All right, so now what I'm going to do is duplicate that rounded rectangle, reposition it over another pin, reshape the length of it, and create clipping masks, and so on and so forth, until I've cut out seven pins from this Pinterest board. Now the next step guys is super important. You need to merge your layers. So what I'm going to do is select an image layer and it's associated rounded rectangle shape. And I'm going to right click and hit merge. So I'm going to do this one by one for each of our card cutouts. So now my layers panel looks much more condensed and I'm ready to move into Apple Motion. So I'm going to head up to the file menu in Pixelmator Pro, select export, and I'm going to export this as a motion project. Now, once we've exported from Pixelmator, it's going to give us a folder that includes all of the media, so all of our different layers here, and a motion project. I'm going to open up that motion project. Now, the first thing I wanna do is change the properties of my motion project, because when you export from Pixelmator, it takes on the dimensions of whatever image you were working on in your canvas in Pixelmator. So this proportion is kind of a funny one. It mimics my computer screen. So I'm going to select the project layer in my project pane, head on over to the inspector, and let's just change the preset to 4K. And now my Pinterest image is too big for my screen. So I'm going to select the group that has all of my Pinterest images in it. And I'm just going to scale it down until it fits more or less in the screen. Now, let me just show you what we're working with with all of these different image layers. If I disable the bottom image layer, which I know is my full screen image, you can see I have all of these cards that we cut out as individual layers. Let me enable that full screen image again, and I'm going to create some groups here to stay organized in my project pane. So I'm going to select my first image layer copy. This is my first cutout. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select image layer number seven, I'm going to right click, I'm going to select group, 
and I'm going to rename this group. I promised myself in this video, I was gonna be super organized with my groups. And for my full screen image, I'm gonna group this one too, and I'm going to call it full screen. All right, at this point, I wanna make my whole project 3D. So I'm gonna head on up to add object at the top center of the screen and select camera. It's gonna ask me, do I wanna to switch to 3D? And I sure do. And now I'm going to bring in my video file that I got off of ArtGrid. I'm gonna drag it to the top of my project pane so it creates its own group. And then I'm going to take this original group that had all of my images in it and I'm going to drag it above that video clip. So now my video layer is all the way at the bottom. I'm gonna solo it so you can see, there it is. And all of my other images are right on top. I'm gonna to rename this group that has all my images in it just to help you guys follow along. And now I wanna take that full images group. So this is all my cutouts and my full screen image. And I'm going to try to position it inside the computer screen from our B-roll shot. So make sure you're queued up to the very first frame in your timeline. This is super important. Your playhead's all the way at the beginning. And I'm going to select the images group and I'm going to start in the inspector window under properties. I'm gonna scale this down and I'm going to move it over here in the frame and I'm gonna rotate it so it kind of matches the angle of the computer screen. And at this point, I'm gonna to have to modify the scale on the X value and the Y value independently to try to get this group to fit in this computer screen. Now you'll notice when I'm working in 3D, I cannot use the distort tool on groups. When you're working in 3D, things get real funky. So we're gonna do a little bit of a workaround right now and some other workarounds throughout this video. Just be ready for that. So let me zoom in here on my frame so I can get a really good look. And I'm just going to have to force this group to fit inside this computer screen as best I can. And it doesn't have to be perfect right now. We're gonna come back to this, don't worry. All right, so here's our image with our group kind of forced into that computer screen. Now what I wanna do is keyframe the position of all of our cutout layers in Z space. So what I'm going to do is select all of the layers in my cutouts group individually by clicking on the top one, holding down the shift key and clicking on the last one. And then I'm going to jump to let's say 15 frames in my timeline. And I'm going to drop down in my inspector window under properties on the position value. And I'm going to make a keyframe at the top of position. So I'm making keyframes on X, Y, and Z. And let's make a keyframe on scale for good measure. Now in my timeline, I'm going to jump 20 frames and I'm going to push up the Z position on all of my cutouts. So they look like they're coming out of frame. At this point, to help us kind of navigate what we're doing, I'm going to select my full screen image here. I'm going to head on over to filters, color, and let's go to brightness. I'm just gonna dial down the brightness on this a little so we can better see our cutouts in action. And now make sure you're still on your second keyframe on all your layers here. And what I'm going to do is one by one play with each of these cutout layers and modify the X position and the Y position and the Z position on each of them till I'm kind of happy with the way things are composited. I'm also gonna change the scale on them so some of them are bigger than others. Guys, while I'm modifying the position and scale of all of these layers, if you like this video, if you wanna see more tutorials like this, let me know, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, let me show you where we're at. I'm going to hit the play button and you can see that all of my cutouts come forward in 3D space. Now, obviously the positioning has drifted since this B-roll shot is a dolly shot, but don't worry about that. We're eventually going to motion track this, but to get our motion track to really work the way we want it to, we need to do another workaround right now. What I'm going to do is select my cutouts group and hit control S to solo it. So now all I have is just my animating pins coming forward. And at this point, we're going to export this as a video clip. This is kind of unusual, but I've been playing around with this and honestly, it's just the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to head on up to the share button. I'm gonna select export movie. And this is super important. Under settings, you wanna be on Apple ProRes 4444. This is going to maintain the transparency of our animation so we can lay it over our live action video and see everything else going on underneath. So I'm going to rename this pin animations and we're gonna save this guy. 
And now what I'm going to do is unsolo that cutout group to bring back everything else. And I am going to disable it and collapse it. So I don't have to look at all these layers. Now what I'm going to do is head over to my finder. I'm going to grab that animation we just exported and I'm going to drag it above my images group. So it's in its own group. And we're just going to rename this group to keep track of it. And now let's draw our attention back to our images group. Now, if you remember, this has all of our cutouts in it that we just disabled and hid, and it has our full screen image layer. I'm gonna select this again, head on over to properties, and I'm going to, at the very top of my transform menu, reset all of these parameters. So our Pinterest screenshot is back to its original size. And now I'm gonna reduce the scale so it's a little smaller than full screen. You can see my animated cutouts here. I'm gonna disable that group so we don't have to look at them. And now what I'm going to do is motion track this full screen image. So I'm going to select the image layer. We've got the brightness filter on there so it's not as bright as it originally was, but that's fine. I'm not gonna worry about that for now. I'm gonna cue up my playhead to the beginning of my timeline and I'm going to head over to behaviors, motion tracking and match move. And in my inspector window under mode, we're gonna to switch to point. And under type from transformation, we're gonna go four corners. And now what you can see is my Pinterest screenshot now has these little red circles on each corner. I'm going to pin each of these circles to the cross marks in the corner of our green screen here. So I'm just going to do a rough resizing and then we're gonna go back in and fine tune. All right, we're close. So now what I'm going to do is be selected on one of my corners and I know I'm selected on it because it's not red anymore, it's yellow. In my inspector window, I'm going to use this tracker preview window to center up my point right in the center of that cross shape. You see that? Now I'm gonna to move to the next point by just selecting it in my canvas. Wow, that one's already dead center, I did a good job. Let's move on to the next one and this next one. And now I'm going to switch transform from attached to source to mimic source. And I'm going to hit the analyze button to track this guy. Now I know it's not filling the frame yet. Don't worry, we're gonna get to that. Okay, our motion track looks pretty good. Now I'm going to select that image layer in my project pane and I'm going to now use the distort tool to fit our full screen image inside this computer screen. All right, this looks great. Now let's go back to the project pane and I'm going to enable my animated cutouts group and the pin animations video that we created. I wanna make sure my playhead is queued up to the very beginning of my timeline. And what I'm going to attempt to do is try to reposition these pins so that they align pretty perfectly with the pins on our full screen image. They don't have to be completely perfect, but I wanna get them as close as I can. All right, this looks great. Now let's head back to our project pane. I'm going to enable our animated cutouts group and our pin animations video that we created earlier. And I'm going to select the match move behavior that we added to our full screen image. I'm gonna right click, copy it, and I'm going to paste it onto our pin animations video. So now they are moving right along with our full screen image. Excellent. Now let's grab that pin animations video clip again in our project pane and I'm going to duplicate it. And now we've got two versions of that video. I'm gonna draw my attention to the original version and let's head on over to filters, glow and select glint. And this glint effect is going to really make those animating layers pop off the screen. And you could be as subtle or as dramatic as you want with this. I'm gonna go pretty dramatic. All right, that looks pretty cool to me. Now I'm going to select the animated cutouts entire group, head on over to properties, and I'm going to dial down the opacity on these a little bit so they look more, I guess like holographic. Now we're just gonna finesse this whole thing a little bit. So I'm gonna stay selected on my animated cutouts. And what I'm going to do is in my timeline, I'm gonna trim the beginning of this entire group. So I'm queued up at 13 frames in, selected on that entire group, I'm going to hit the I key to trim the first 13 frames off. I'm also going to add a fade in and fade out behavior on this. And I'm going to change the fade in time to 
10 frames and I'm going to change the fade out time to zero. Now let's cue replay hit to the very beginning of the timeline again and let's draw our attention to this full screen. So I had dialed down the brightness a little bit on this so we could really see how we were working. For now, I'm going to dial up that brightness a little bit on this frame so it better matches sort of the lighting in the room and looks a little more natural. I'm also going to head on over to filters and I'm gonna add a very subtle blur to this so it's not so sharp looking. Now let's add some keyframes to these effects as well. So let's jump about 15 frames in and add a keyframe on the brightness and on the amount on our blur. And then let's jump another 20 frames. And I'm going to dial down the brightness very little. It's just gonna help our cutouts pop off a little bit more. And I'm just gonna dial up that blur just a little. All right, guys, that is our augmented reality effect in Apple Motion. If you like this video, let me know. Give me that thumbs up. If you think Apple should send me like, I don't know, a prototype of the gogs, let's start a petition down in the comments. I really want to try them. I'm super excited about it. Thank you so much for hanging out. Here's some other videos for you. I'll see you again.